everyone, Whitney here. Welcome to a non-traditional episode of The Word. We're doing things differently here for a couple of reasons. One, we're under quarantine, um, but two, we've got Father's Day coming up. So I thought I would make this episode a little bit more male-centric. And to do so, I brought on my friend, CJ, the creator of the popular website and social media platform, Vegetarian Dude. Uh, hi, CJ. Thanks for joining hey. us. CJ Thanks, is an awesome plant-based chef. He's my friend of many, many years, and he's got all kinds of expertise in the plant-based dude world. And so I thought he could give us a little bit of advice. I get questions all the time from female readers who ask, how can I get my, my man to eat more plant-based or be more okay with my plant-based diet or questions from men who are wondering um, how they can go plant-based when maybe they don't have any kitchen skills. So uh, CJ is the, the authority on all of this. So he's here to help us. Um, so CJ, I guess let's start off with you telling me how, you, how long you've been plant-based and what inspired your decision. Sure, yeah, so I, my plant-based journey really started 12 years ago. Uh, so around 2008. And initially for me, it was about health. Uh, and so I had been working in the entertainment industry for a while, not eating well and needed to make a change. And so I decided to go vegetarian um, for the time that I was on this project. And then, and that was about three months. And after that, I felt better and had started to learn more about it. And so decided to continue for a year. And then that year turned into to many years. Uh, and over that 12 years, though, there were transitions from vegetarian to pescatarian, back to vegetarian, and then to fully vegan, really, for the last uh, four years or so. We have somewhat of a similar story then, because we were both working in entertainment, eating uh, like crap, pretty much, <laughs> and decided to make that transition. Um, so what are some common stereotypes that you hear about guys who eat plant-based? So many stereotypes. Yeah, I'll start with my, my wife. So we met online and on my profile, I said that I was vegetarian and her first image was Berkeley hippie sandals, stinky, <laughs> right? Like that's what it was. Uh, so I think that's part of it. I think it's also protein always is the first thing that comes up. Like, how are you going to get enough protein? You can't get enough protein. The protein's not complete. Whatever the complaints are um, that you're, you know, there's also just a masculinity thing that doesn't even have to do with health of you're not a real man unless you eat meat. Uh, and speaking of Father's Day too, and I look at, you know, all of the things when you're shopping for Father's Day and it's like 80% of it has bacon or it's about meat or about barbecue. And so right. it's grilling. Really, <laughs> exactly. It's really tied into kind of the masculine idea uh, is mm -hmm. connected to meat. Um, and so that's that's a big connection, disconnect, I think, when you go plant-based um, as a guy. Was that hard for you? Did you get any friends making fun of you or um, people questioning your masculinity? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, for sure. Yeah, and I think it's, it's something that, you know, there'd be a lot of just kind of pushing to like, oh, don't you want to try this? Don't you miss this? Um, or, oh, can't you just do it this one time? You know, and, and especially when you think about, you know, family and friends you've had for a really long time where there's traditions that you have together or things that, you know, contain meat um, that are a big part of it. So that it was definitely a, a transition and getting coming to terms with like, no, I am comfortable doing this. But it's taken a long time because at first it was like, I didn't even want to bring it up or I just kind of try to, OK, can I order something without people necessarily noticing that that's what I'm doing? Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. You went plant based long before me. And I remember I sort of thought I sort of knew about it, but not really because you weren't super vocal. Um, but yeah, it's been a 12 year journey. So I, I can see, see why given a lot of the roadblocks that people experience. Yeah. And even, you know, when I started vegetarian dude, which was about six years ago, I initially, it was just a personal project. It was really like, I'm just going to do this to kind of have something for me to work on developing recipes. Uh, over the span of a year and then it's you know continued to evolve and grow from there but it was totally like a private project that then started to grow and got more and more passionate about it mm -hmm. and do you have professional training in in culinary yeah so i did a course with ruby uh r-o-u-x-b-e and so they have a plant-based professional certification course it's all online um uh, but it is definitely an intensive cooking course. People, when I say it's online, people think about, oh yeah, you're watching some YouTube videos, but it's from the beginning of, you know, chopping skills and like different cooking methods and really gave me a deep foundation in, in plant-based cooking. That's awesome. And so you would recommend that to other people? 
Yeah, definitely. And they have, they have different levels. Like there's a more casual level. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. At the time I really was wanting to dig deeply into that. And so I went for the professional certification. I would highly recommend checking it out though, if you're looking to get into it. Yeah, especially right now when we're doing everything online anyway, it would be a good time. Um, you brought up the, the question a lot of people ask, don't you miss it? Don't you miss cheese? Don't you miss butter? Don't you miss bacon? Do you miss it? <laughs> Did you miss it? <laughs> yeah, it's a great question. And I think, you know, I, I mentioned the topic, thinking about it as a journey. Um, so I'm not judging anybody for wherever they might be in this journey and whatever things they might still eat. Like for me, like cheese was the holdout. That was like giving up, you know, dairy milk, uh, cow's milk. That was like the first, that was easy. It was like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's easy. And it actually hurt my stomach, I realized after a while. So easy switch. Cheese took a much longer period of time. Uh, but today I don't, there's nothing really that I can say that I miss. I think what what struck me as I started cooking more and more that it was really about the the flavors and textures and less mm-hmm. about, oh, this isn't an animal, you know? So I think about yeah. like like wings, which I used to love wings, but buffalo cauliflower like does the same, satis- like it satisfies me the same way, you know? Totally. So there's all of those things that I've just kind of found what those substitutions are. And so it's, it's rare that there's something that I, I miss or feel like I'm missing out on now. But again, after 12 years, for the beginning, <laughs> it would happen a lot. I'd be like, oh, sushi looks good or oh, that burger looks good. But, yeah. So cheese specifically, what kinds of tips and tricks have you learned along the way that have made it so that you don't miss cheese, that you can recreate it yourself? Great question. I think the first sidebar rant, I have an issue and, you know, plant-based or vegan vegans lead with cheese as trying to get people to convert like don't worry you won't miss the cheese try this you know slice of non-dairy cheese doesn't cut it don't do that uh but i think i think about it in in like different categories like i think it's very easy to replace spreadable cheeses so Mm -hmm. things like cream cheese or any kind of spreadable cheese like that even goat's cheese like that kind of vibe is pretty easy and i think the products are on the market are really good i will say those Uh, are like um, pretty much identical. You could definitely yeah. fool someone with that. Agreed. Yes. Don't tell them <laughs> that it's vegan. Don't leave them that. <laughs> uh, and then cheese sauce, I think, is the other thing too. That like you can get a really good sauce uh, or like you know creamy kind of like mac and cheese or Alfredo sauce or even nacho cheese. Like all of that, I think, is doable. I think the hardest is the sliced cheeses and like kind of melted cheese on a sandwich. For me now. I like the substitutes that are out there, uh, but it's a hard thing to go to initially. And so I'd say if you're just starting out, thinking about other things that will satisfy, you know, what that texture, flavor, and and nutrition is. So like using avocado instead of cheese that like you still get, you know, it's creamy, it's fatty, it's savory, it's delicious. Mm-hmm. And so having having those kind of substitutions, it's like still gets you satisfied in the same way, but it's not exactly cheese. Yeah. And I think the last thing I'd say on this is that it's, you know, manage the expectations. You know, if something, somebody says, oh, this is a great substitute for X, you know, go in knowing that it's a substitute or <laughs> think about it as its own flavor. You know, it's like, oh, this is going to be tofu ricotta, that it's, it's its own thing. It's not necessarily going to be exactly like the ricotta. So, yeah. so appreciate it in its own right. Think of other options that aren't direct switches, but can serve what you're looking for. Uh, And then your third tip seems to be kind of ease into it. Like you may not find something you like immediately, but there are plenty of other aspects of plant-based cooking. And yeah, like like I always say with predominantly plant-based, maybe don't eliminate cheese at first. Maybe that's not the first part of your journey. (laughs) Yeah, same boat. Yeah. Um, So what are some ways that women can help ease their men into a plant-based diet. I guess we sort of talked about some of the things we just talked about are some good tips, but yeah, I I constantly get women asking like either maybe their man is sort of interested or maybe they're just not on board at all. And they're having some serious issues, like deciding where to go eat. (laughs) (laughs) It's a great question. So I think for me, and I think this is true of anybody, but especially guys, I think it's about leading with taste. Uh, and not leading with this is healthy, this is better for the environment, this is better for animals. Uh, That can all come later, but really start with taste. Like what's something that tastes good 
and and where are their easy ins you know so like we were just talking about like trying to if his favorite meal is baby back ribs don't try to recreate that plant base as the first thing you do <laughs> like start or <laughs> start from where they are and so think about you know what are some meals that maybe you already eat uh like it could be you know pasta and red sauce and usually you put cheese or put parmesan on it or something like that and just do that without the parmesan or maybe try it with nutritional yeast or things that where there's an easy substitute Mm -hmm. Uh, or even, you know, I think like, like baked goods that you might normally cook with, with butter and eggs, like you can swap that out with, you know, a flax egg and using uh, plant-based butter. And I think also, uh, like some sauces too, like mayo-based sauces, I think like vegan mayonnaise is a super easy swap. So kind of thinking about some of those areas where it's an easy in, and then leading with taste, I think is a super important one in things like you know, I mean, there's all the, the plant-based burgers that are out there now. So like Impossible Burger and Beyond Burger, that's like a very, very easy swap to just, I think the initial thing is open the mind that this is possible and change the point of view that going predominantly plant-based means just eating kale, right? Like you can still have your comfort <laughs> food. And then once that's open, it's like, oh, okay, like I'm down to explore some of these other options that might be out there. Right. Those are great tips. Um, do you have some recipes on your website for vegan mayo or some of these vegan cheese sauces that you talked about? So I don't have the, the recipes for vegan mayo or cheese sauce yet, but the some of the ones that are on the site, there's a vegan tuna salad that I think is really great. Uh, it's made with jackfruit, uh, which is also another great substitute for any kind of like pulled meat texture. Mm. Uh, there's one of the most popular posts that's a vegan pulled pork made with oyster mushrooms. Ooh, Full that sounds disclosure. amazing. It's amazing. Uh, the photos are terrible. It's one of my <laughs> oldest posts, so it needs to be updated. But that's one. I mean, I've had directly people say, women say, feeding this to like the guy in their life that they loved it and they thought that it tasted delicious and didn't really miss mm -hmm. um, the meat. So I think that's those are two that I would say are great to uh, to check out. Yeah. Yeah. Mushrooms really help lend both that texture and then also kind of that umami flavor that a lot of people are looking for when from meat based dishes. Agreed. I love the mushrooms. And I think they're with that. Just another note on that, that just made me think of is the uh, people tend to have associations with different vegetables from throughout their life. So trying to come back with like, if they hate mushrooms, it's like, well, why don't we try it in a different format? Like let's take your favorite barbecue sauce, put it all over a mushroom and grill it portobello mm. mushroom and it's like okay cool now you have that flavor that you already know you love for the barbecue sauce and it's just grilled into the mushroom and it kind of try to like ease back in if there are those aversions to certain veggies i love that idea so i'll just put ketchup on everything my husband eats <laughs> <laughs> and then hopefully he'll accept it <laughs> <laughs> gotta no, throw it somewhere it's pretty good he does like to uh put condiments on everything though <laughs> i love the sauce yeah Lost to make the dish um so whatever happened with nicole then right after you guys that's your wife you when you started dating and she was not so sure about your smelly hippie plant-based <laughs> ways uh, what made her come around because she eats pretty plant-based herself now too as well right yeah and she so this is actually kind of a funny piece because she she was pescatarian so mm. she was already like in that I mean, world tiptoeing and kind of Exactly. And I think, <laughs> but for her, it was specifically guys that it was like, because like women is like, okay, yeah, any, and women in general, I think are just more open to these things and like, especially health related changes in lifestyle and diet. Uh, and so for her, from her experience in, and she went to Berkeley. So like the literally that guy, it's like, oh yeah, I know that. <laughs> it's like, guy. I knew that guy. <laughs> like, I don't know. So it was, you know, she kind of took the leap of, well, let's try it. And then, you know, and then we went out and then it was fine. And then of course I cook all the time. So it's hard. She's to argue really benefiting from this. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Hard to argue when you're getting delicious homemade meals. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, so as a busy guy, I mean, you work full time. How do you find the time or what are some of your tips may maybe for other guys who are just getting into this on cooking plant-based and staying on top of meal prep, all the things? It's a great question. Uh, this could be a very long answer, so I'll try <laughs> to keep it succinct. Okay. I think the, I would say, you know, starting small. I think like the the small steps make a habit. So having, so pick a meal 
you know, and depending on what that meal is of the day, let's say it's, it's breakfast during the week and swapping in a smoothie and just starting with that. It's like, okay, it's a really easy thing to do. You could have, you know, the same base of a smoothie uh, and then just kind of swap in different fruits to make it have different flavors and kind of keep that fresh every day. So I think, you know, and that's, and it's just a really easy thing to make. So you throw it all in the blender, you blend it up and then you have a breakfast. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the meal prep planning piece is something that I, I've been thinking about that a lot. Cause for me, the way that I usually do it is I try to have a day of the week. It's usually Sunday where I'm prepping a bunch of stuff. And the way I do the prep is thinking about different ingredients that I can cook with throughout the week. So I'm not, you know, making a meal that I'm going to have 10 of that meal for the week. I'm, you know, chopping up carrots. I'm making a salad dressing. I'm washing greens. I'm making, you know, beans and grains. And then throughout the week, it's, you know, that can turn into, into tacos, into a bowl, into sandwiches, like whatever the kind of mix and match of that looks <laughs> like. So I think, you know, that's, that's a way to think about it. And I'd say another thing is just making more than you need for a meal. So mm-hmm. then you have those leftovers for multiple days, so like on the day, whether it's the weekend or a night of the week, when you have more time, you know, rather than making that pasta dish just for the night, it's like make a lot more and then, you know, make your bowl that you're going to eat it out of and put the rest away. And then you'll have that to continue to eat um, yeah. for the rest of the week. That's exactly what I do. I do some prep on Sunday and then two to three nights a week, I'll make a full dinner and I'll double or triple the recipe so that I have leftovers. Love so, it. And I love, so important to do. <laughs> so important to do. And I think with some of that, I also will remix my leftovers. So like mm. when I then bring that back, it's like, okay, cool. If I'm going to have, so say the pasta. So if I just cook the pasta marinara sauce, I might take the leftovers, put it into a pan and then bake it. So mm. Then I have like a slightly different baked pasta or maybe I put some other veggies on it. And so just thinking about, okay, how could I have the same base and maybe do something slightly different with it? Yeah. That's a great idea. What are, do you have any more examples of those? Yeah, I think, let's see, I think having, well, a theme we've talked about that's not jumping in all at once. So Mm -hmm. even if you're just adding elements to meals that you already have that are plant-based, you know, or making the small substitutions, it's like getting the, uh, like in a, yeah, in a turkey sandwich, just literally going for vegan mayo instead of regular mayo. And it's like, oh, well, if I can do that substitution, then it again, starts to kind of open up these pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, some other things I think about with with meal prep too, specifically to eating plant based, is there there is an adjustment in, well, two things like the volume that you might need to eat to be full, where people yes. think about like you know, and especially like as a guy, and if you're active, like you, you know, you think about oh, I'm gonna go and get a salad, and like you don't want to double the size of that <laughs> salad, you know, maybe 2.5 times the size of it. And sometimes I'm having a giant bowl, and it's like, yeah, I eat a salad for lunch, and it's huge because that's like what I need to be full and um, satisfied. So I think there's there's some of that and like kind of rethinking like what you're making um, so that you are full in mm-hmm. in the volume and then also the component parts of it. So thinking about having, you know, whole grains and legumes and these things that have, you know, protein and fiber that's like going to keep you full uh, and satisfied. And it's, that was, a, that was a big shift for me even in, in first going, you know, when I first went vegetarian, the immediate thing was cheese carbs because they're already vegetarian, right? And it's like, I can eat a grilled cheese. I can eat mac and cheese. I can eat pizza. <laughs> of course, I didn't feel good after that. <laughs> and then it was, how do I, you know, learning about mixing things together that actually creates a satisfying meal. So like, yeah. I have, you know, like rice and beans in many forms, mm-hmm. quinoa and beans. And again, there's so many different types of, I'm saying beans, but any legume yeah. Um, and grains mixed and having that in in tacos, burritos, bowls, salads, having a big salad and always adding grains mm-hmm. um, to that, I think makes a big difference. And I think an- another thing I would say is that's also a mental shift in this is we're, you know, at least in America or like Western cultures, it's about like meat is at the center of the plate. Yeah. So everything is like, here's my meat. And then what else is around it? And so there's just changing your mindset that like, the meal as a whole is giving you everything that you need. And so you're, it's not, okay, instead of this meat in the middle of my plate, it's going to be a block of tofu. Like that's not necessarily true. It can be, uh, <laughs> but not thinking about like, oh, well, what, well, what's my meat in this? You know I mean? And people will ask that, or what's, what's the protein? Where's my protein? Yeah. <laughs> Where's my protein? And it's like, well, if you add up all the things, I know you've done a bunch of posts about this too. Yeah. Yeah. It's more than enough 
protein. Um, totally. It takes a while but to I think eat. it's like the satiety thing. Um, even just looking at a plate and not seeing a big piece of meat, some people psychologically might feel like they're not going to be full. So it's sort of that psychological part. But then also what, you, what you've been talking about just now is that because plants specifically like fruits and vegetables are lower in calories and lower in fat, um, they do not fill you up calorically as much as, as cheese or eggs or, or meat, which are, are very fat and calorically dense. And so it's really important that you mix and match those components. Um, otherwise you will fall into that trap that lots of people do when they go plant-based and they say, Oh, I'm just not satisfied. Well, you're not doing it right. basically. <laughs> so if you're sitting around and eating kale salads that don't have an adequate, uh, that don't have some beans, some whole grains, then, then yeah, of course you're not going to be full. So I think that's really important to remind guys is to increase your portion size um, and make sure you're having those those components that are really going to provide the satiety. So we're talking a lot about beans and grains and vegetables and meals that I absolutely love, but this episode is uh, supposed to be very male centric. We're talking about stereotypical dude food. What are some meals that fall into that category that you've made plant-based that you either have recipes for um, or that you could recommend that people try that really satisfy that kind of hot dog, hamburger, rib, typical Father's Day meals that we hear about? Yep. Love it. So I think there's a few things. I think the, and some of these we've mentioned, but just to bring them up again. So I think that like the wings, so the buffalo cauliflower to me is a great substitute and then you can and have dips with that too. So having like your vegan ranch, uh, vegan blue cheese, I think you get as good homemade vegan ranch, uh, which isn't up yet, but it will be. <laughs> okay. And then I <laughs> they think can go the, to vegetarian dude to find that. Vegetarian dude.com sign up for the email list and then you'll be notified <laughs> as soon as it's ready. And then I think you thinking about grilling. I think that there's, you know, we talked about grilling portobello mushrooms, which I think is a, is a, a great option. I think other grilled vegetables too, because again, thinking about the the flavors we talked about that really brings it together. So charring those vegetables, using barbecue sauce or other kind of existing flavors that might be applied to, you know, meat uh, as a part of it can be a really good idea. And then I also like, I do like the, the fake meats on occasion. So I think that's, I'm not opposed to that. They're not, I wouldn't think about it as healthy necessarily, but I would think about it as you know, a substitution there. So like the, like beyond meat sausages or like, yeah, impossible burger that we talked about earlier. Um, and my approach with that is, you know, you say you make the sausage, but then have a bunch of vegetables that you add on top of that, you know, so it's kind of adding to what they might normally. So I think that's a pretty good option. And then I think there's, you know, if you want to get a little more advanced, you can get into like cauliflower steak. I've uh, also made like a, a butternut squash steak. And so again, going in and this isn't going to taste like steak, right? It's not going <laughs> to taste like you're eating steak, but it has that, you know, cauliflower, like it's just, you get a, basically it's a big chunk and then it's uh, you know, you cook it in, I would do it in like a mushroom kind of wine sauce mm -hmm. and then you sear it at the end. So it has that, you know, infusion of the savoriness we were talking about earlier, the umami from the mushrooms uh, and the wine that just gives it kind of that rich vibe and then finishing it by searing it, uh, ideally in like a cast iron skillet. And then that gets you that, that crusty, you know, kind of burnt flavor and like those things combined and then having sauteed mushrooms on top of it is just like a great dish. That sounds amazing. Nice. Will you come make that for my husband for Father's Day? <laughs> I'm going to need that recipe. And also the pulled oyster mushroom. That yes. sounds delicious. Pulled oyster um, okay. mushroom. Uh, one other thing I was going to say is the, I do have a recipe up for barbecue mushroom tacos. So it's a similar approach in pulling the mushrooms, uh, but with a barbecue sauce and you cook it over the stove. So there's actually a video of that, both on my Instagram, Facebook, and uh, the website. And would you say those are pretty simple for the average guy to follow? Super simple. The, the mushrooms... And I, I mentioned this in my post about it. Like if you, again, overall theme, keep it simple. I have like a kind of homemade barbecue sauce uh, mix, but you can do it with your own favorite barbecue sauce. So if you have a barbecue sauce you like, making sure it's plant-based, which most of them are, and then you, and then it's really just pulling the mushrooms and mixing them in that and then cooking them in a pan. Like that's all that it is. And then you can put that into, you know, a taco or on a, a bun as a sandwich. Um, yeah. So that's, I think that's a really easy way to just branch into it. I think that sounds super approachable. 
I think a good tip for women would be maybe getting their guys involved then saying, well, we're going to do this plant-based dish, but you can bring your favorite barbecue sauce and <laughs> we'll make it together and it'll, it'll be fun and easy. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. That's a great idea. Okay. So last question, what are your top three plant-based kitchen hacks? Ooh, plant-based kitchen hacks. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Think, I'm trying to think about plant-based, like other kitchen hacks. I mean, any kitchen hack. Some ideas. Okay. So I think a, so a few plant-based kitchen hacks. First, I'd say is, is the prep we talked about earlier. I think especially with greens. So a lot of people get a head of lettuce and it just sits and wilts in the fridge. So when you get that, wash it, clean it, put it into a container and store it so it's already ready to go. Or just buy pre-washed at the store. Uh, and then that way it's like, it's super easy to make a salad or just to add those greens to whatever dish that you're making and then you're adding the nutrients um, and just the benefits of having leafy greens. So that's one. You're Mr. Chow. A little Chow <laughs> out there. Uh, a second tip I would say is um, thinking about storage. So also when you're like to keep things fresh, so like when you're going to buy something from the store, so like, like carrots is a great example. I think you get whole carrots and again, they can get like limp a little bit. And a great hack is if they do get limp, just soak them in water. Mm. So just get a bowl of water and just put the carrots in that. And then they'll actually firm back up. And um, they last forever, right? In the fridge. And then it'll last forever. Like um, over a month if they were in water. Yeah, exactly. So you can, it'll firm them up and then they basically replenishes their life. Um, and so then you can get that. They lose, they can, yeah. Maybe not over a month, but definitely a few weeks. They'll get limp. If you, so you yeah. bring them if back. they end up, <laughs> if you bring them back and they end up going bad, you have other problems because that's <laughs> more than enough time to eat some carrots. <laughs> I think the other, another thing I would say as a, as a plant-based tip is having cooked grains and beans ready to go. So again, canned is obviously a super easy way to do this tends to be more sodium and they don't really taste as good, but having, you know, making a large batch of say brown rice at home, and then you can take that and it stores really well in the freezer, uh, but also keeping that on hand in the fridge. And then it's makes it super easy to just add that to whatever you're making. And like we talked about earlier, making so it's more satisfying, keeping you more full um, and adding, you know, the nutrients that you, that you need on a plant-based okay. diet. Grains are your best friend guys. We love grains. Got to eat those grains or you're not going to be full. I promise you. That's why I always tell people, get the grains on the plate. Well, CJ, thank you so much. These tips have been so, so helpful. I'm sure all the dudes out there that are interested in going plant-based are feeling a lot more uh, confident about that choice now and all the women or other dudes out there who are trying to get their significant other to go plant-based. Now you've got some ammunition. So. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. I want to let you know that I will be over on CJ's IGTV talking all about plant-based nutrition for guys. We're going to be clearing up tons of myths. Some of them we discussed here about protein needs, about soy, all of that. So be sure to watch that video um, and have a, have a happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Thanks guys. Thank you.